we're now going to work a series of examples which demonstrate how to use the Shields concept of the dimensionless critical shear stress in the design of stable channels. So this is problem 10.6 from the textbook from Sturm 2010. For a slope of 0 0.002 in a wide stream, calculate the depth at which sediment motion begins for a fine gravel with a D50 equal to 3.3 millimeters. To give it information, we have a wide channel. For a wide channel, the depth is equal to the hydraulic radius. The small amount of wetted perimeter on the ends of the channel are neglected. So we have a bottom slope of 0 0.002 and the D50 is equal to 3.3 millimeters. It says determine the depth at which sediment movement begins. As I mentioned, the wide channel, the hydraulic radius is equal to the normal depth. So the formula for the dimensionless critical shear stress, tau star C, is equal to tau sub C, which is the critical shear stress, divided by the difference between the specific weight of the sediment minus the specific weight of the water times the critical particle diameter. So from the Shields diagram, the typical range of the Shields diagram for the dimensional, dimensionless critical shear stress is anywhere from about 0 0.03 to about 0 0.06. For this example, we will use 0 0.044 as the value of the dimensionless critical shear stress. We compute the critical shear stress value from gamma times R sub H times S sub zero. And now we can combine those equations into one so that the critical dimensionless shear stress is equal to gamma S minus gamma times d sub c, and that equals the specific weight of water times the hydraulic radius times the bottom slope. When you solve that equation, you get that the hydraulic radius, which is also equal to the normal depth for the wide channel, is equal to 0 0.12 meters. Now what this means is if the water depth gets bigger than 0 0.12 meters, there is enough force on the walls of the channel to start dislodging the particles.